Good morning, my soccer universe. Well, cup battles and promotion fights. That's what yesterday's evening was. And also Tuesday, I didn't talk about the other uh, promotion fight in England. I uh, hope you enjoyed the two videos that I posted yesterday. Uh, Tuesday, I just decided there is not too much to talk about. So that's why we got two yesterday. Um, Let's start with the cup battles and probably the biggest, nominally the biggest game was probably the uh, Coppa Italia cup final between Lazio and Atalanta. A little bit, um, you know, if you're a casual observer, it was probably an underwhelming uh, final because none of the big names was in there. On the other side, Atalanta was, is one of the most spectacular teams in Italy this year and Lazio really, really fought itself through uh, the cup, beating both Inter and Milan away from home to get there. So, um, from that, in that sense, it was the, uh, a, a good final for that competition. Also, uh, at least for Lazio, quite some at stake because um, you are a little bit in danger of losing the European spots. Uh, Probably you would get into the top uh, seven, but if you win it, you're already in the Europa League group stage. And yeah, for Atalanta, it was getting the first silverware since 63, which is also a biggie for them. Um, therefore, it was a cagey game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very un atalanta like uh, In addition, and this is something of a, a little bit out, out of nowhere, there's a huge rivalry between Atalanta and both Roman teams. Uh, for whatever reason, I would like to know a little bit the backstory, but I keep hearing it. There's a huge rivalry between these and of course the uh, Lazio fans were largely misbehaving uh, ahead of the game um, but you know in Rome this is almost to be expected which is a sad thing as I said the game was cagey with a little bit more of Lazio I mean Atalanta though had done the, big, the biggest chance uh, like 10 minutes before halftime where the Ron first hits the post and then even gets the um, rebound and puts it wide um, where Lazio's defense looked really, really shaky. At the same time, when Deron takes the shot that goes to the, to the post, Bastos puts out his hand, it touches the hand, it's not given by the referee. Uh, that honestly should have been a penalty and I don't understand Italy uh, because they seemingly have changed their rules for handball uh, during the season. There were handballs given uh, through VAR that were actually quite um, contentious because uh, it was similar stuff and now this handball where really he's jumping up, has the hand in the air, is clearly uh, making himself bigger whether intended or not but this by the any ruling should be a handball, should be reviewed but yeah, referee was not uh, giving it. So it is nil-nil at, uh, at the half and the game continued to be very 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 cagey. Uh, seemingly the weight of the game was too much for both coaches and you know in addition I know that Atalanta has a pretty big game coming up against Juventus um, on the weekend which they basically will have to win in order to look good for the Champions League qualification. Um, and Juventus is celebrating their title. So I was either hoping for an uh, overtime period, because I really would like Juventus to win this one for Milan's sake. Although Milan doesn't deserve it, but you know, as a fan, <sighs> you're a fan. That's uh, their, their all reason kind of flips off. So yeah, uh, or that Atalanta loses a heartbreaker and it turned out to be the second one. I mean, uh, Papo Gomez uh, had a, actually another uh, shot at, at the woodwork, although it was from a very acute angle, uh, where he's dancing around in the box, keeping the ball, keep, 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 keep keeping the ball left, right, left, left, right, take, takes a shot and hits the outside of the post. I wouldn't say it was a huge chance, but yeah, uh, 
on a better day it goes in to the net. Um, that was basically um, the last chance for Atalanta. Papo Komostan has a similar situation as uh, Salah had in last year's Champions League final where he gets pulled down, I want to say by Korea. Uh, not 100% on that one. Korea actually quite well in, in his game. Was proper, probably the most active, most outstanding player. Uh, but you know, he hurts his shoulder. He doesn't need to come off. Uh, they fix him, but right during that period, and I, you know, I was a little bit uh, flipping back and forth between um, that cup final and uh, uh, Leeds against Derby game. We'll talk about that in a sec. Um, that there was a corner kick for Lazio, and I'm not sure if Gomez was in or out, but I, there was clearly this was a distraction. Milinkovic Savic, who just came in for Luis Alberto, jumps up high and puts it into the net. 1 0 Lazio. Atalanta then tries to get the equalizer, but they uh, get a free kick close to the uh, midway line. They punt it forward, and, but they're not defending. They're really all men forward, committing to getting the ball. Uh, it's of course intercepted by Lazio, and they uh, Correa gets the ball, is alone, but runs through, um, gets past the defender. I think Gomez actually is a little bit out of position himself. He took the free, free kick, gets past the defender uh, and slams it home. Around the goalkeeper, slams it home. Uh, goes actually through, I think it was Deron. Uh, make it 2-0, everything done. People running on the pitch like crazy. Uh, so, yeah. 2-0 flat Lazio uh, and I have to say for Atalanta you feel probably heartbroken about that one because you should have got the penalty in the first you probably had a little bit more of the game in the second um, and Lazio scores the two goals so and they have also home field advantage so Lazio plays next year's Europa League group stage for sure now, the second cup final yesterday also uh, between Galatasaray and Akizaspor. You remember Akizaspor from the uh, Europa League? If you're not as much into Turkish football as I uh, um, and I am also not that closely following, Akizaspor won the cup last year, but this year seemingly the Europa League zone was too much. They uh, are already rele relegated with two days to go. For Galatasaray, uh, it is basically two finals in one week. Uh, this one and then the one coming on the weekend where they have to play second place team Bajakshi here, where they actually are in the they are uh, level on points. So that is very well the championship decider. Uh, unless it's a draw and Bajiktas wins, uh, then Bajiktas even has a chance. So uh, quite interesting in Turkey. Galatasaray was not playing well and Akizaspor even takes the lead early in the second half, really putting up a valiant fight. And then uh, Galatasaray gets a penalty, misses it, it's saved by, by the goalkeeper who really had a great game. Uh, Galatasaray gets a second penalty and also uh, Akiza player is sent off. Um, Let's put it that way, uh, the referee was not their friend, so more more, 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 more that later. Then uh, Figuli, and it was funny because yesterday I was wearing my Valencia shirt with Figuli on the back. Uh, slots it home, or I think in the 82nd, somewhere late in the game, uh, or 87th even. Uh, slots it home in the only hole, it was between the goalkeeper, it was like, but no... Uh, no fault of the goalkeeper. It was a, it was a rebound, and the goalkeeper did everything, and it was just um, by millimeters. Makes two one Galatasaray, and then the last in, in stoppage time they even make it three one, which was too high because Akiza really pulled pulled up a fight. They were very upset with, with with the referee to the point where the referee left the field. They were all uh, mocking him by applauding and really getting at him. Uh, was one of the weirdest scenes that I've ever ever seen. That all Akiza players are standing there. 
applauding um, referee even hands at another yellow card but they were clearly feeling that he was uh, not in their favor but so yeah Galatasaray Turkish Cup champions speaking of silverware Ajax uh, won 4-1 at the Graf's Cup so it doesn't matter that um, PSV also won Ajax gets the 34th uh, championship a championship that didn't look like it for a long time uh, having heavy losses away to PSV and away to um, uh, Feyenoord but in the end uh, PSV started dropping points and it was PSV's to lose I mean the game in Amsterdam between Ajax and PSV that was a very lucky Ajax win but since then Ajax is in control of their own destiny and yes I am a simple size for Ajax but I recognize that PSV actually probably threw away this championship uh, they looked really really safe uh, for a long time during that season and yeah Ajax I mean it seems a little bit just because there's a great run in the Champions League uh, so maybe them getting the championship seems fair I'm personally happy because Netherlands Ajax is my team uh, but it's a little bit of a weird championship, I have to say. But Ajax enchanted Europe, they have now the double. I am still a little bit salty that they didn't make it to the Champions League final. They would have, they really would have deserved that, that one. Yes, I'm not mad at Spurs, I just feel they should have done it, honestly. But yeah, this last half, they didn't play all that well. So to England we go, uh, where the crazy promotion uh, playoffs are happening. The return legs. Uh, after the first game we had Villa with a 2-1 advantage against West Brom. West Brom gets the goal in a very scrappy game. When I watched the highlights, they barely showed any highlights. They showed the goal. I think there was another chance by West Brom. That was basically it. Not much coming from e either side. It's basically what, when you read about uh, the, um, the championship uh, here in Austria, or Germany you always hear that this is really the, a bone breaker league and from the little bit there that I watched yes great atmosphere at, at, at the games the fans accept it fully but the play is not always the finest one let's put it that way um, although there are some exciting moments West Brom gets the win at home uh, no away goals rule so at penalties it goes and uh, West Brom misses the first two 3 1 uh, as the Willem misses there, um, theirs. So going with 4 um, four 3, last penalty, Willem makes it and they're through um, to the final at Wembley. And everyone expected Leeds to be there because they won the first game 1 0 at Derby County and had took the lead at halftime. And I have to say, I didn't say it on Saturday, I really like those Leeds away jerseys. Uh, the dark blue with a lot of patterning on there. That was actually quite nice looking. A uh, little bit out of the box. Uh, I was a little bit hoping for Aston Villa versus Leeds in the final because those two teams seem, seem, seem to me the big names in there. And I think the Premier League would need both teams up there. Uh, so Leeds, and I really would have liked to see PL. I really would like to see PL uh, coaching in the Premier League. Uh, that uh, that would would be something. I gotta look for the lights here. Um, I get to see his ideas on the other side. Uh, Leeds really was in bad shape uh, at the end of the season. They seemed like the best, if not second best, second best, if not best team in the league. And then how they fell out of the um, top spots uh, is a little bit of a stunner. Maybe it's just too intensive their way of playing. Uh, but Derby County plays a similar way. They were also out of it and just edged just in the promotion place. Again, Leeds having an early lead, but just uh, a lead midway through the first half, having control of the game. But just before the halftime, uh, Derby County scores, makes it 1 1. And just after the halftime, they make it 2 1. Uh, a little bit luck, let go on. He takes a shot, falling, but goes in 2 1. That means tied all overall. And to, to be honest, it was to me 
it didn't feel as great as if there was the away goals rule. I really think the away goals rule should be up there because then every goal changes who is advancing. Uh, except it's the same as uh, the score is matched. So from that uh, sense, because now 2-1 it is just just overtime. Um, then they get a penalty. Derby, Dar, Derby County fully deserved a penalty, make it 3-1. Now Dar, Dar, Derby County is on. Uh, shortly thereafter, um, Leeds gets their goal 2-3. It was offside, uh, but it was a crazy, 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 crazy uh, beginning of the, sex, of the second half. But now with 3-3, it all looks set to go to overtime, but then a red card and I was thinking, oh, this red card might be uh, trouble for Leeds, proved to be trouble. Uh, in around the 80th minute, or well, last 10, 10 minutes, first uh, Derby hits the post, you think that Leeds uh, has the ball, but uh, again, they are being pressed. Derby launches another attack, very nicely played. and. It ends 4-2 and 4-3 on aggregate for Derby County. Uh, heartbreak at Elland Road, uh, but it's Derby County against Aston Villa and the two Chelsea legends, Lampard, and who is the coach of the R, Derby County, and um, Terry are playing, who is, I think, the assistant at Aston Villa, playing it out for a spot in the Premier League. I would say Villa is probably favored and actually I would love to see Villa back. Uh, Aston is another one of those teams that just needs to be up there. That was it for yesterday's action. Actually I talked way more. I, I, I thought this video is going to be done because I didn't see that much. But yeah, uh, let me know your thoughts on all these games. Uh, let, let me know which ones you watched. Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.